Hello and welcome to my 4,000 subscriber Q&A video. Thanks to everyone that sent a question in and uh, everyone who has asked a question, as I'm sure you know by now, has been entered into the draw to win this, a 4K ultra sports action camera thingy. So uh, good luck everyone, we'll do the draw at the end of the video um, and uh, yeah, we'll see who wins that. Now I thought that's a pretty decent prize and thanks to Purple Monkey for this for uh, allowing me to, uh, well, basically giving it to me to give away. Because, um, yeah, that's a pretty appropriate prize for a 4K give, uh, 4K subscriber thing, a 4K camera. See what I did there? Um, but then I thought, no, could probably do with something else as well as a runner-up prize. So, as a runner-up prize, that winner will get um, a set of these, which is a three-pack of Oxford comfy uh, neck tube things, which is um, quite an essential thing for this time of year, in this country anyway. So, uh, yeah, there's two prizes up for grabs, the main one and a runners-up one, and we'll do the draw at the end of the video. So stick around. I'm going to answer some questions now, and, uh, yeah, we'll see who wins. Now, I have had quite a lot of questions. There's no way I'm going to be able to answer all of them, uh, so I've picked a good chunk of them out to uh, attempt to answer. Um, everyone that, Like I said, everyone that has asked a question has gone into the draw. Um, if, when I draw the winner, it's a question that I haven't answered, I will answer it at that point. Um, otherwise, I've picked a good selection of questions to answer in this video. So um, let's get started and we shall start with Urban Fireblade. What bike do you think will eventually replace the GPZ500 when the time comes? Something to replace the GPZ at the minute uh, as a that, that would serve as a sort of throughout winter bike and a, a commuter that sort of thing. I'm toying with the idea of a dirt bike, uh, a little enduro type of bike um, because I want to do some proper off-roading and it'll be handy to have a yeah a nice bike for it. Uh, well, not, certain, not necessarily a nice bike, but a suitable bike. Uh, doesn't matter if it's all beat up and stuff, because it's going to get beat up anyway. So, yeah, a little, I don't know, say, for example, a CRF250, 250L. Um, that would be ideal uh, for me, because I could probably, I'm pretty sure I'll get by with commuting on that um, to work throughout the winter and stuff. Um, but then also, yeah, uh, up to do some green lanes and stuff. It's not a, too much of a long ride up to Surrey uh, to hit the places where there was actually proper proper lanes. I mean, round here, there's in West Sussex, there's nothing at all really. Uh, probably one or two little lanes, and that's it. Uh, but yeah, the good stuff is up in Surrey. So yeah, I'd uh, certainly get one for doing some of that. Um, so but yeah, that would probably be a replacement to the GPZ when the time comes. Uh, it will be sad to see it go, but I'm coming to the realisation that, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be soon when it's time to move on from that one. Uh, there is another, a question about that a bit further on, which I'll, I think I can link that in if I uh, can find it. Skeggy Cruiser. Yes, uh, so yeah, th this one's mostly relevant as well. Um, Skeggy Cruiser, question one. Do you feel more confident riding in the wet and on slippery surfaces now that you've had a little off-road experience? I would say certainly yes, um, but I also found a lot, I was a lot more confident after doing my first airfield riding day, learning what the bike can do in a sort of higher speed situations and stuff. It gives you more confidence on the road. Yeah, you know the bikes, you can lean over a lot more than what you probably would ever imagine you could on that. So a combination of the airfield riding days that I've done and the off-road day in Wales that I did recently massively increased my confidence, especially on questionable, questionable surfaces. Um, let's say so yeah it's definitely um, helped a lot that has and yeah question two related to the GPZ um, you recently said in a video that you would keep the GPZ 500s now and never sell it it's been a great bike to you but my question is why keep it and believe me it's a question I've asked myself uh, loads of times in the past when changing bikes um, yeah I, I did say that fairly recently ish I think but yeah why keep it at the minute I'm only keeping it because there's still good life in the the tires, the, the consumable items. There's still plenty of life left in them, so I'm going to uh, certainly make the most of them before sort of deciding to uh, take it off the road, sell it, whatever. Bimball, he says, if you could be a superhero that was animal based and had animal powers, which would you be? For example, I'd be Wasp Man. My powers would mainly be hanging around picnics, bugging the crap out of people. The obvious choice for me would be some kind of rat man type of thing. Um, but the sort of, what would a rat's superpower be, apart from, I suppose, intelligence? That um, That's not really... Well, it's useful in a lot of day-to-day -day situations, but 
it's not so much of a superpower as such, is it? I could go for the um, the flying equivalent of a rat, which isn't a pigeon, by the way. Pigeons are daft and stupid and rubbish. No offence to pigeons, or Pigeon 187. A bird that actually suits the term flying rat would actually be the crow. Crows are highly intelligent, so just like rats. So, yeah. Maybe some kind of crow man. I'd have the superpower of flying. But not just flying. Flying in a perfectly straight line, as the crow flies. Jordan Hourglass DJ. If you had the chance to take a two-week moto touring trip in the USA, where would you choose to ride? Ooh, I think um, if I was to take a uh, two-week uh, touring trip in the USA, I would have to do over the West Coast, I think, and do like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Vegas, a lot of the West Coast, mostly California, Nevada, that sort of area. That's where I would. Um, that's where I would go. I think, um, yeah, if you're over there, I think doing Route 66 on a Harley Davidson, I think, is kind of a just one of them things you have to do. It's like a rite of passage, as it were. Um, yeah, that that'll be pretty cool. Next one's from Calm Biker. Not sure what he means by this. Uh, yes or no? Have you stopped indecently assaulting your motorcycles yet? No. Volt Tech. What would you name your boat if you had one? <laughs> well, obviously, Boaty McBoatface. Um, if I couldn't have that, if it, if it was just a small vessel, I would probably name it, as a nod to Dexter, the Slice of Life, I think is what I would go for. Slice of, slice of Life. It's your boy Dropshot. Do you prefer electric or petrol bikes? Easy. Definitely petrol. As much fun as electric ones are with the high torque and all that lot. Um... You just can't beat the sound of what you get from a petrol uh, machine, really. I mean, electric, it's got still got a bit of a way to come, really. They've got to improve the range for a start and the price. As far as just riding them is concerned, it's definitely petrol, because you just can't beat the proper noise of a, a internal combustion engine. Uh, next one from Luca J. Best starter bike for tall riders. I think he's taking the mickey there, because, as you know, I'm quite short. So I don't really know what the best bike for tall riders is. Yeah, I really can't answer that. The best person to ask will be someone like Spicy110, because he's six foot four and he's ridden a lot of bikes. He'll probably tell you if there's any uh, suitable ones. And I'm, I'm guessing most of them are going to be like the BMW GS1200, um, <laughs> which not really ideal as a starter bike, but um, yeah, what can you do? Stephen Hill asks, for how long did you agonise over whether to buy Thrusty from the captain? Oh, that was quite an easy one, actually, because uh, I've ridden the Thruxton R before. And although it is super fun, super fast, brilliant bike, uh, I just the seating position I just wouldn't be able to get on with for long periods of time. So when I heard uh, that uh, he was going to be selling it, um, I was I was like, oh, I could and then I was like, oh, I could probably buy that. No, wait, no, I can't. Uh, it would be totally impractical for me. So yeah, it didn't really take long for me to realise that uh, yeah, that's not the bike for me. Hunter Smurf asks, what would you get if you went for a cruiser? Definitely a Rocket 3, I would say. Yeah, Rocket 3 all the way, I think. There's supposedly a new one coming out. Uh, next one is from Hippodrones. When you get in a dirt bike to come play in the mud? Aha, well, I sort of answered that earlier, didn't I, if I was to get a replacement for the GPZ. Um, yes, as soon as I can get my hands on something, I'm definitely coming out to play in the mud. Um, so, yeah, if, if I could find a, ch a cheap... Uh, I don't know two hundred and fifty, three hundred cc machine. Uh, then yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be up there. I think if I was to get one of that, I was thinking about this, and it's probably won't be a long term thing for me. Uh, I think I'll buy one. I'll go up to Surrey. I'll do all the lanes and do that. You know, f quite often throughout the year or something, and then I, I, the novelty will will wear off. I think, and then I'll get rid of it and get something else. I don't know, I might be completely wrong there. Don't know until it happens. Um, but yeah, definitely up for that as soon as I can. I'll answer these next two questions in one because the answers are the same. First is from Purple Monkey 1974 Have you got a date in mind for the next chip shop ride? And also, Mr. Mr. Husias, when's the next chip, chippy chips run? Um, and also, yes, you may be at 4K subs, but do you know what the meaning of life is? The meaning of life is 42. Everyone knows that. Uh, and as for the next chip shop ride, it's going to be. March. I've not got a specific date in mind, but yeah, I think it'll be mid-March 2019. That'll be when the next chip shop ride is. 
Right, these next couple of questions pretty much have the same answer, so uh, we'll do these both. Uh, Jamie Clayton 9 asks, uh, what part of the world would you love to go touring on your bike? Personally, I've always wanted to ride through the Alps. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, the Alps definitely on my list of places to ride. Uh, and Sir Ed of Sandy Hook, aka Rocket 3 Guy, if you could have an all expense paid one month motorcycle adventure, track or touring, what would it be and why and maybe with whom? Uh, the answer to that one would be if it was all expenses paid, one month trip, the perfect place for me to do that would be Australia. Um, Gold Coast, Captain Cranky, Mr. Ross Adventure Area, and Tubi, the Tubiverse. Uh, that is definitely where I would go. I, I am, well, I'm determined to. Uh, get a trip out there at some point in the next few years. Um, I, I would love to get out to Australia and uh, yeah, ride with some of them guys down there. Because, um, yeah, it just looks awesome. Um, so, yeah, Australia is the answer to that one. Um, but going back to Jamie Clayton-9's question about um, other places in the world, yeah, the Alps, um, Austria, Germany. There's a fair few places in Europe that look pretty nice to ride, some really nice roads and beautiful scenery out there that I'd definitely love to see. And as I mentioned earlier, over in the States, California. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's um, mostly all the ones I can think of. I'm sure there's, there's many more places. In fact, Scotland. <laughs> and why, why, I'd like to see some more of Wales as well. So that's probably a, a little mini UK tour maybe in order there. Brit Ninja 88 where would you like to see your channel go in future? And I'm also going to roll in this question as well from Hepcat Harley because it kind of all rolls into one. Uh, what will motor vlogging become in 10 years time and do you se do you see yourself being involved? It's really unclear what's going to happen I think. 10 years time, I'm not so sure it's going to be around uh, motor vlogging uh, as such. For me, as long as I'm still enjoying making the videos and editing them and putting them up then I'll still be around I'm sure. Um, I, I only do it really just for the sort of interaction from fellow bikers and motor vloggers, like-minded people. Um, as for where I want the channel to be in the future, um, not so fussed if I've still only got 5,000 subscribers in um, 10 years time or what. I would like to be at a stage where I can do some more honest and more in-depth uh, test ride reviews on bikes because some of the bigger guys, they're getting bikes sent to them and that they haven't for weeks and they can really, you know, they can really ride them and get to see what they're really like to own after, you know, uh, using them constantly for a few weeks. You can really pick out and get the best sort of review you can because you'll find, you'll pick out all the little niggles and uh, conveniences and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'd like to be in that sort of stage where I can, yeah, have a long-term sort of review to uh, do on bikes. Uh, another two questions I can answer here. First from Walt Tanner. Would you ever do a long road trip with the captain, for example, Germany? And Joseph Glaw says, uh, do you think the Captain Bigglesworth and yourself will take another road trip? The Cornwall trip was hilarious. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun on uh, the Cornwall trip. And we do need to get together and discuss what we're going to do next time. Uh, Germany is a good one to uh, pick, actually, because we can go on a road trip over to Germany and meet up with uh, Phil Tonic and Red Renner. I think that would be a pretty cool thing to do. Um, but yeah, we do need to get together and discuss um, what we're going to do for the next uh, outing of the Rambunctious Squadron. Another two questions here I can answer in one. Uh, uh, apologies, I'm probably not going to pronounce this right. So may, uh, so you may uh, Susie? No idea. Um, my question is, what was the worst case scenario that ever happened to you while you were on your motorcycle? And Triton2 asks... Uh, in the years of riding, what has been your scariest moment on the bike? Uh, long time subscribers will know the answer to this, and here's the video. Shit, 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 shit. So yeah, that was it. Um, losing my brake caliper, because I'd done some maintenance on my front brakes, they needed a good clean up, because from the salt from winter, Gave them a good clean up, put it all back together, great. Um, forgot to fully tighten the caliper bolts. Did Only did them up hand tight, I think, um, just to make sure everything else worked, you know, give it a quick test. Forgot about the last important bit, which is making sure that they're torqued up. So, of course, as soon as I started riding, they started to 
vibrate themselves loose and they fell out somewhere around Arundel and uh, yeah by the time I got to that place in the video there, Berry Hill, uh, yes there was no caliper attached to the brake disc so yeah, <laughs> very scary. In that video I didn't really downshift or anything and use engine braking to help, I just used the back brake which obviously didn't do much good. Um, so I think yeah if that was going to happen again, hopefully not, but if it does then I'd like to think that uh, I would think to uh, use the engine braking by uh, downshifting a few gears. Eh, it's not going to happen again, I'm pretty sure. That sort of thing, you, you won't, it only happens to you once, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Next question from NNS Toby. My question is, would you ride a scooter? If so, what scooter? Ah. Well, if it was a situation where there's, I just for whatever reason couldn't ride a normal motorbike and it had to be a scooter, I would either go for the Berg, Suzuki Bergman, because that's got some really cool electrical features. I mean, you've got the fold-out mirrors that you do with the touch of a button and an electric adjustable screen. You can bring it all the way up or have it quite low. Um, there's that, or possibly that Honda X ADV uh, adventure scooter-looking thing that they do. I've not ridden one, but it certainly looks interesting. Um, that would be my choice if it was uh, a scooter was the only option. Uh, EPAG73, uh, what's the most humorous riding episode you've experienced as a biker? Uh, it's most likely going to be something that happened on the Cornwall trip. Uh, we had a lot of laughs on that, and there was quite a f quite a bit that we couldn't put into the video because of how inappropriate <laughs> it is. Um, oh yeah, we had a good laugh on some of that. Uh, that's probably the most humorous, but I can't actually tell you about it because it's inappropriate. Um, that's yeah, the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, there's probably been others. I, I remember another time it was on a group ride out. Uh, where were we? Which one was it? We are up in, on a ride out in the Midlands, it was around Melton Mowbray, Grantham area. can't remember exactly who was there, but I do remember Skint Biker was there. Now that's a name a lot of people wouldn't have heard for a while. We were queued up, I think at some traffic lights waiting to go under this bridge. Uh, all queued up, sort of, you know, side by side. Skint Biker was on the old kill switch patrol. So yeah, he come running down the middle of Son the of a line of bikes, kill switching everybody. It was brilliant. <laughs> that was a good laugh, that was. Someone get him. Dash cam on two wheels. What camera are you using at the minute? Um, I assume you mean what helmet camera. And I've got two at the minute. Uh, I have the Drift Ghost X, which is my main sort of daily use camera, which is sort of on all the time, always recording sort of thing. So far, so I've had it a few months so far, uh, it's been pretty good. It doesn't suffer the problems that the Ghost 4K has. Um, this seems to be quite reliable. I've not had any problems with it not recording, other than the times I've not charged it up enough or I've let the SD card fill up. Um, so yeah, Ghost X is so far serving me quite well. Uh, and then my main camera for doing actual videos, when I know I'm going out to uh, record a vlog or whatever, is the uh, Sony 4K uh, FDR X3000, which uh, is yeah an expensive camera. But it's got some really, it's got really good picture quality and some good uh, features on it, like the steady shot and things like that. And it also came with this sort of framework, so you can attach the uh, wireless screen to it, and that's handy for when I'm doing walk around and stuff. So I can just point it and shoot, like a camcorder, really. So yeah, that's it. Ghost X and Sony FDR X3000, which is a really long name for a camera. Next one from Jiggy Moto. What video are you most proud of and why? I think that will probably have to be either the Cornwall video because behind the scenes there was a lot that went into the editing of that. Um, I, I pretty much did most of it. And I had five camera angles, I think, to all sync up and get into the timeline. Sometimes there was a camera missing or whatever due to the usual sort of problems that you get with these things. So yeah, it'll either be that, or I'll probably actually say my first Distinguished Gentleman's Ride video, uh, the London one. Uh, that kind of happened because I was only using my GoPro um, mounted on the handlebars, and I didn't have a microphone, so it, the internal microphone on the GoPro wouldn't really have picked up anything. So I, I just thought, well, I can't really do anything. I'm just going to record it anyway, and if I happen to be able to make a video out of video out of it then great. As it turned out um, I had the idea of doing it as like a silent movie type of thing you know with the uh, caption cards and things like that so yeah I went about doing that made it black and white and um, put the music to it and I, I think it re worked really well um, that was something rather different 
to what you normally get on my channel. So I, I quite like that one. Chris Wallace 959. Bacon roll, bacon bap, bacon cob. What do you call it? Uh, this causes arguments all the time up and down the country because every different region calls it something else and everybody's wrong, it's just bread, come on. Um, but from where I'm originally from, Leicestershire, uh, we would call it a bacon cob. Uh, but from in Hinckley, Leicestershire, you're close to the border of Warwickshire there, and that is where the term, uh, where the definition changes. So you kind of had a mixture of people that would call it a bacon cob, and people from Warwickshire that would call it a batch, uh, which just sounds wrong. It's definitely a batch. Quiet. So, yeah, depending on which side of the A5 you're on, uh, it would be whether it was a yeah carb or a batch. At the end of the day, everyone's wrong because it's it's just bread, isn't it? Right, these last few questions involve Mrs. 480, so I've brought her in on this one so we can answer these ones. And we'll start with Sandmax67, and he asks, "What and how long ago did you get into Rattus Rattus, which is rats?" So I had them when I was a kid, and then when we bought the house, we decided we wanted a pet. But working full time, both of us, we didn't think a dog was appropriate. So we opted for rats. And that's when we found our four rescues yep. and brought them home. Yeah, back in 2015 it was. So uh, we got the, yeah, the original four. And uh, yeah, now we're on, well, we did go up to ten. Uh, we've lost a couple um, in the last few months. We're down to eight now. But yeah, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's very, 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 uh, it's very rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> there was something else I couldn't say, say earlier. But yeah, it's very rewarding um, what you get out of them. And it, I was surprised because a uh, um, few years ago, uh, I just thought rats were just another rodent that you can keep as a pet, just the same as like hamsters, gerbils, that sort of thing. Uh, I had no idea that they were as social and smart as uh, what they actually are. So yeah, I'm I'm quite happy that we decided to go for that in the end. Next one is from Sighted Fujitsu. If you had to choose between a new bike or having children, what colour bike would you get? I'd say that depends on what the bike is, because some colours look right on certain bikes and others not. What about you? What, what, what colour bike would you go for? Well, I already have a green bike, so I've won. Um, <laughs> my next colour would be orange. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. And it'd be a Kawasaki. Orange Kawasaki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do look good on some of those. Next question is from 2 Honda Boy 2. Uh, Hi, Phil. Being a family man with eight grandkids myself, do you and the missus plan on having a few youngsters? Uh, not in the immediate future, no. Uh, maybe in a few years' time, once we're in a more permanent sort of house. I think that's, well, big enough at the minute. <laughs> Eight rats is enough for us so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with just the little rats for now. Um, yeah. Who knows, a few years' time, I'll probably uh, change my mind. We'll see. Martin Wilde asks, uh, this is one for you to answer because you've got the experience and I haven't, uh, what advice would you give on the Mod 1 test? I recently failed mine by clipping a cone on the avoidance bit. Was a clear run until then. Was gutted, awaiting a bit more warmer weather to retake. Yeah, I didn't do the mod 1 or mod 2 because I did my test before they uh, introduced all that so uh, I got away with that. Um, Jammy sod. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to hit the cone. <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> In all seriousness plan ahead when you know what route you're doing around the circuit go as wide as possible on the corner because then it's virtually a straight line through the two cones and then you can pull through straight and straight back in on whatever side you're going. Google has the pictures of circuits so you can look at them and make sure you know what you're doing beforehand. And come off the throttle as soon as you go through the speed trap as well. A lot of people don't so they're going too quick and then hit the cone and I think that's where they go wrong. Ah uh, yeah. So hopefully that uh, helps you there Martin on that one. Uh, Rob64 uh, does Mrs. 480 know you're on her bike, and is she getting on okay with it when you're not on it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have been riding it a lot more, because, um, well, I, I got permission to uh, use it when I wanted to, uh, if she wasn't using it. So, yeah, I've actually been riding it a little bit more than uh, the GPZ at the minute, because I, I like it more than the GPZ. 
prior to that, <laughs> he might not have told me. No, until no. Until after the uh, fact. Uh, no, every time I've been on it, you've known about it. Mm-hmm. 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 But when but... he's not on it, <laughs> yes, I absolutely love my bike. I'm really pleased with the choice I made, especially the colour, of course. Uh-huh. And I'm just making the most of the dry days, getting out, picking up the experience where I can. And uh, cracking on. Mm. We went out the other weekend. Um, looked like it was going to be a nice day. Uh, about 10, 10 or 15 minutes into the ride, it starts chugging it down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, but it's all good experience, isn't it? Getting get to grips with some of the, the wet roads yeah. and things. So I was quite fortunate. Even in my, my week of training, I got heavy rain. Ah, uh, yes. Travelling up and down the A27. So that, that was great fun. Next question is from Bulldog Gaz. As I see you're riding Mrs. 480's bike again, does she get to ride your bikes? Well, uh, she started on the GPZ before we bought the ER6. I stole it, temporarily. (laughs) Um, And uh, you have ridden the Scrambler as well. Briefly, 30 seconds. That's more like four minutes, something like that. It was cold. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit cold, to be fair. And you were used to the heated grips being on all the time and your bearings, no heated grips. I and felt you're fully naked. Exposed. Yeah. Um, come the summer, uh, yes. it'll be yeah, it'll be better. You'll be able to actually ride it for a decent amount of time. I'll have a proper go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the last question, I believe this is the last question, uh, is from Psycho Paul. And he asks, uh, will you and your good lady do a dual motor vlog anytime soon? Now, he said he's dual as in, like, the things that knights do and stuff. So, I guess, I challenge you to a dual. Challenge accepted. Oh. Ow. Uh, right, all typos <laughs> aside, I think just mean a dual motor vlog. Um, I, I think we could set up a camera in your microphone. A uh, microphone in your helmet. helmet. Yeah, that's the one I could have done with that a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, we set up a microphone and then, um, yeah, see what, what happens. I'm sure we'll get some good stuff. I mean... I'll swear a lot. Yeah, you're probably swearing at other drivers most of the time. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd fit right in. Um, so, yeah, uh, we do Yeah, plan to do a dual motor vlog at some point. Um, as long as I don't have to edit it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll handle all that. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, get, get around to recording some kind of dual vlog at some point. Okay, that's it for all the questions. Uh, now we must find out who's won the 4K camera and who's the runner-up of the Oxford neck tube thingies. So how this draw is going to work, uh, we've got the spreadsheet up here. This contains everybody's name that asked a question, uh, apart from those that opted out, of course, there was a, uh, only a few of those. Um, so we have in total 67 entries. Uh, what we're going to do is go to the random.org website and generate a number 1 to 67, uh, which will be uh, in reference to the uh, row number. So. If I go to random.org and we're going to put 1 to 67 here, I'm going to hit generate and this number will be the winner of the 4K camera and it is 55. Who is 55? 55 is Mr. Mr. Husey. So congratulations Mr. Mr. Husey, I will be in touch with you about getting the camera sent to you. Now for the runner up. Uh, we're going to put the numbers back in and see who wins the Oxford neck tubes. And it is 24. And 24 is Blue Marble Rider. Uh, did I answer this? What other hobbies, interests, apart from gaming, vlogging, and bikes, do you have? Right, let's switch back to. So, Blue Marble Rider, you have won the Oxford uh, Comfy neck tubes. In answer to your question, uh, you've probably seen the guitars behind me. Admittedly, I rarely play them these days, and I think part of my New Year's resolution should be to play more. I can at least get some more practice in, because I'm not very good anyway, but I don't really play it often enough to actually get any better, so I'm not going to improve unless I uh, yeah, have a bit more of a go at that. Um, I, am also, oh, I also have a keen interest in rock music, and I did used to do a radio show. Um, I have my own uh, rock show that I used to present on community internet radio. Um, I'm thinking of bringing that back at some point if I can find a radio station to do it on. 
Um, that might be that's more of a winter project. So yeah, that might be something I'll get back into. But yeah, other than the guitars, really, it's just uh, there's well rats. We've got uh, this is Mr. Freddy. He's doing all right. He's 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 an old one. He's uh, well, we don't know exactly how old, but yeah, he's about three and maybe a bit more. Uh, so yeah, he's doing quite well for his age, if that is uh, true. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, guitars, rats, and also I've been doing some of these recently, uh, these metal model kits. Um, completed Iron Man the other day. Um, but yeah, I've got Iron Man, there's some Star Wars vehicles as well that I've done, which, um, uh, yeah, I'm quite liking these. They can be quite annoying sometimes because they're very fiddly, but once you finish one, it's, yeah, there's a nice sense of achievement. So yeah, a bit of the metal, metal works model making things. Um, that's it. You're right up there. Anyway, that will do for this video. It's probably a lot longer than I intended to. So, so thank you to everyone that uh, asked the questions. Sorry I couldn't answer all of them. I will try and at least uh, reply uh, in the comments of that uh, questions video just to answer all of the questions eventually. Um, but th thanks for watching this one. Uh, ride safe, everybody. Have a Merry Christmas, and I'm sure I'll see you in some kind of video before the new year. If not, have a great new year. We'll see you in 2019.